This week, Twitter gave a warning. Your follower account will drop. The company recently said it is identifying almost 10 million dubious accounts a week and is putting all accounts through a security check, purging the ones that don't appear to be run by a human. The news caused a stir among investors and influencers, wondering if it will cause a major dent in statistics. Joining us now, Krishna Subramanian, co-founder of the content platform Captivate and Bloomberg Tech, Sarah Fryer. So I lost about 1,000 followers in the last 24 mm -hmm. hours. Donald Trump lost 300,000 followers. Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, lost 200,000 followers. But there could be a lot more. Sarah, um, tell us how many accounts we're talking about here. We're talking about uh, all of the accounts that Twitter has locked. So it's not necessarily accounts that they're wiping off of Twitter, but they're locking them until they can prove that they're real humans. I lost about 200. I think for everyone, there's a, a select portion of their followers who are just maybe potentially bots or not. And it's not that bots are banned on Twitter. Don't get me wrong. There are a lot of companies that, that run bots that do good things or a lot of humorous bot accounts. Um, but the ones that are trying to sort of spread uh, misinformation or cause trouble on Twitter, they're working to make those a less visible part of the service. And it's part of a, a trend over the last few months of them trying to crack down in ways that don't, con don't eliminate them from the platform, but make them less visible. So Twitter says it's identifying 10 million accounts a week that are fake. And you, Krishna, say that 11% of accounts on Twitter are fake. So are we going to see a lot more accounts disappearing here? Because President Trump has, you know, 50 plus million Twitter followers. Uh, de definitely. So 11% is a great average to look across the board. Some people are going to have a lot higher. Some people are going to have a lot fewer. Right? I believe Elon Musk probably dropped less than half a percent. And, and so, you know, I think this is going to be something that Twitter is going to do as well as Instagram and Facebook constantly, where they're going to try to just bring more trust back into these social platforms. Well, and then how do you decide? Because, you know, the fake Elon Musk comments on every real Elon Musk yep. tweet. And is that a fake account or is that, you know, does that qualify? Um, I think that's another problem and another huge issue that happens because you don't want these fake Elon Musk accounts to promote fake topics. Right, but right? they're active and they're being used. And is that actually against Twitter's terms of service? When they're replicating the same identity. The problem is, is they're saying, I'm Elon Musk, right? And they're trying to hop on his bandwagon and get people to do something else. So they're tricking people into doing things that they might not normally do and, and leveraging Elon Musk's identity. But these are gray areas because parody accounts on Twitter are okay. It's okay to make fun of a famous person like Elon Musk on Twitter. Um, accounts where people are pretending to be him are not. But the line between the two of those is very thin. And, and how is Twitter actually making these decisions? So there are lot, lots of different problems here, right? can't always be decided by AI and technology. Some of it is machine learning, but a lot of it is in improving the training of the people who go through and do the checks on, on accounts when they're reported. And another big move that Twitter made recently was uh, in people's replies when they have somebody saying, you know, this is, uh, this is you, have a, you have a tweet that you put out, but then somebody replies with something that is, is nasty or um, violent or whatever it might be like that's not related to the tweet. They're trying to use machine learning to hide those. Mm -hmm. um, it's called gray boxing. When you click on them, then you can see them, but it's not going to show it to you automatically. They're trying to just create a, a environment for people that's a little bit less terrible. Hostile. <laughs> Hostile. Um, Krishna, how is this going to impact the cottage industry of influencers and celebrities who have made their names with big pumped up social media followings. Yeah, so it, it's, it's a huge issue for brands, right? They lost probably over 250 million on branded content um, last year alone, um, just through, through a lot of these bots and fake followers. So influencers are gonna have to go back to really creating authentic content and just focusing on growing their audience organically. And brands are gonna have to start looking at different ways of judging how to price content from an influencer standpoint. It's no longer about followers, it's really about true authentic engagement. And look, Facebook has talked about its fake account problem. They have millions of fake accounts. Yep. How does Twitter's problem compare to Instagram and Facebook's fake account problem? It, it's very similar, right? I, I think Facebook um, in May mentioned they, they deleted about 500 million accounts or, or something of that sort. And so I think- What about Instagram? 
Um, Instagram, I don't, I, I feel like Instagram has a constant, years. yeah, mm -hmm. it's a constant purge that happens. So a lot of these influencers that you can see, there's always a steady decline of, of a number of users that are just getting eliminated off the platform. I don't think these social platforms need to raise their hands and jump up in the air saying, hey, we deleted a bunch of bot accounts. It's something that they should be doing on an ongoing basis. Um, now, Sarah, meantime, another story, another Facebook controversy, um, you know, uh, mail.ru, one of the biggest internet companies in China, had access to Facebook platform even after they cut off access to developers people are up in arms about this and, and Facebook has said no data was misused but there's also ne not necessarily a, a way they can be sure that no data was misused what's your take on this latest round of controversy yeah so this is I mean mail are used a, a big popular service in Russia lots of people use it Facebook has always just wanted to be where the people are they want to be something that everyone around the world can use and this is another example of how those business dealings in the past are coming back to haunt them we could not have predicted back when Facebook had this relationship that Russia would then eventually try to use misinformation to manipulate our elections, right? Now there's some looking back at this with, with hindsight and saying, that was a bad decision. Why didn't you cut them off when you should have? And um, I, I think it's going to be difficult for the company to deal with these revelations that are coming up pretty much constantly now about the way that they tried to work with everyone very neutrally in the past. And now we're realizing that maybe that wasn't a good business decision even. Krishna, do you think that these social media companies are actually going to be able to stay ahead of these problems? I mean, aren't people going to find new ways to deceive Twitter or deceive Facebook? Oh, completely. It's going to be an ongoing fight, an ongoing battle, right? Like the minute someone starts using a social platform, starts using visual recognition to look at content and photos, these bots and other platforms are going to find ways to fight against them. So it's something that's just going to continue to grow. All right. Krishna Subramanian, co-founder of Captivate, our very own Sarah Fryer, Bloomberg Tech.